Good morning. I am one week into my cut. Today is Sunday and um, it's a cardio only day for me. And I'm getting my eyebrows microbladed later. And even with the time change, I had to get up a little earlier to get my cardio in before my microblading appointment because you can't sweat after. Um, this is a Kim Kardashian waist trainer. It's not super crazy. It's just kind of like to help me generate some sweat and some heat in the midsection. I also like it to help release water because if I've consumed um, more carbs than normal, I tend to get watery in the belly. So uh, this kind of just helps me lose that water from the carbs because Saturday, yesterday was um, a cheat meal day, um, but because I'm on the Bikini Boot Camp protocol, it was definitely pared down, but I ate about 100 carbs, so definitely about d twice the amount of carbs I usually eat, so. Anyways, I'm about to go get this cardio in and um, I'm gonna film just like an update for you guys. I'm gonna show you how I got how I get ready for week two and let you know what's going on with me. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> I do have a gym outside that has another cardio machine, has my bike, but I just wanna do a low intensity steady state. So this is the Bowflex tread climber that is in my office. And it's kinda of nice because I don't wanna go out in the cold right now. So here I go. What's up YouTube? My list is done. Took a quick shower. Now I am getting ready. Gotta put my makeup on and I'm gonna head over to my appointment. My favorite place, my glam chair. Hey guys, I just got my eyebrows touched up, microbladed. They're, my forehead's a little crazy right now, but they're gonna look amazing, I can tell. What is up guys? I am now gonna start my, have my first meal of the day. Fasted about 19 hours or so, 18 or 19 hours, which is what I've been doing just naturally and I'm just feeling really great. Um, I'm on a cut, so I'm in a caloric deficit, but I actually feel really good with this um, cut because just like the nutrients from all this whole foods is amazing. I just wanna show you my fridge and how I prep um, for the week just to give you guys an idea as I enter week two. So I'm gonna finishing up this turkey meat. This is just a ground turkey here. This is shredded chicken. And I just, when I'm ready to eat it, I plop it into the air fryer. I've cut up and washed a bunch of strawberries because I do have strawberries on my meal plan this week. And then I wanted to show you, this is the Cruciferous Crunch Collection. I have been eating this every day and just loving it from Trader Joe's. This is the almond milk that I use like in my oatmeal and um, in order to make my ranch dressing this week. So I wanted to show you guys this. You can ignore some of the other stuff in my fridge because not everybody is on bikini boot camp around here. Um, so this is dump ranch dressing, but I actually switched out the coconut cream that it usually calls for and made it with that um, almond beverage from Trader Joe's. And it is more delicious than it has ever been. It is so good and it's a little thinner, which I like. It, the coconut cream kind of gets a little too thick when it is refrigerated. So, oh my God, you guys, this is so good. Dairy-free, macro-friendly, whole food, and you can literally put it on everything. So yes, I practically just wanna drink this stuff. So that is making this bikini boot camp so easy. I also have this because you can easily like stir fry your, um, your protein with some chopped up celery and onions and a little bit of carrots and it tastes super yummy. But yeah, so. I'm ready to go. So let's see what we have over here. This is ground turkey that I'm just reheating on the stove top. And um, this is vegetable blend, a stir fry vegetable blend from Costco. That I just grab a cup of those veggies, throw them in here, reheat them. I added some garlic and then this is super delicious. Like this is not hard to me at all. This food is so nutritious and tastes good. 
I'm recording my podcast today, which is Candidly with Coffee. My co-host is my husband. We're going to go in the back into my gym and record that a little bit later. So I'll give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes and we'll just chat with my husband for a little bit. I'll give you guys the lowdown on how I did my first week, how things are going, how things are progressing. And um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Look at that yumminess, guys. So good. This bowl, by the way, I love it. It's from Home Goods. What is up, guys? I am at my desk on a Sunday. I'm actually goal setting, which I do every week in my handy dandy planner. So that is like, it's goal setting and it's also scheduling and just like organizing my week so that I'm ready as soon as I wake up to have an excellent week. I work, I schedule my workouts too. I put them in there because when you schedule something and make an appointment, it's so much more likely to make it happen. So I take a look at other things I have going on and plug it in where it's gonna fit. If you just wing it, that's the first thing that's gonna go. So I don't do that, especially right now, I'm doing my, my cut. Um, I also have planned out my meal for the week and basically I'm gonna eat the same thing all week, um, getting even a little more on point with my macros. Um, last week was my first week doing the cut and I allowed a few days in there, I allowed a protein bar. And as much as this is also for transforming my body and getting some excellent results, it's also just a challenge for me mentally and where my discipline is and where my willpower is and just a reset. And although I know a occasional protein bar is not going to hurt me, um, it's just more of a mental challenge. And also I've given up Diet Coke because... I know that um, I was kind of getting out of hand with the Diet Cokes. And not only was it becoming an issue in terms of I shouldn't drink more than one can of Diet Coke per day, but um, it was also getting in the way of me meeting my water goal. My water goal right now is 100 ounces. Um, but when I'm sucking down two Diet Cokes a day, um, that's a lot of fluid that's not water that could be water. So those are gone for eight weeks they'll come back. They'll come back in moderation after the challenge. But um, right now I'm just, it's a test of willpower and discipline. And then of course, I just want excellent results. I like to buckle down, get to where I need to be. And then staying there becomes so, so, so much easier. So if you guys follow along on my channel, make sure you subscribe. I will show you what that process is too. So um, once I complete this challenge, I'll, I will show you guys what maintaining means after a reset and what um, what I specifically will be doing in order to maintain those results. Cause I don't wanna go back. I don't wanna go back to where I was. I want to, the goal of the cut is to get myself to a different place. Then I will make adjustments to stay there. So I won't go back to exactly what I was doing before. It will be a modified version of my cut protocol, except I won't be cutting anymore. Um, just means, a little more discipline than I had before, a little more structure, but it also means adding back in some of my favorite um, cleaner processed items. So make sure you follow along because I will share all of that with you guys. So for right now, spending the rest of the afternoon kind of getting myself organized for the week, I'm about to head into the back with my husband. Um, so I'll see if he'll pop on here for a little bit with you guys, but we're going to uh, record our podcast, which is Candidly with Coffee. It's available on Spotify iTunes and Podomatic and it is a nutrition fitness lifestyle podcast. My husband is a NASA certified master trainer. Um, I am well on my way to my nutritionist um, certification and we talk about all things nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, getting results, maintaining results, pushing past your limits. So kind of like a branch off from this channel. So make sure you check that out, subscribe, rate, and review. I'd really appreciate that. But now we're going to head in the back. So let's go see what we're up to back there. These guys are never too far away. I've got Charles here. And that is his old ratty tatty bed that I had when I first got him. But I can't get rid of because he loves it. And I've got Karma snoring over here. And I took off my robe because I feel like you guys think I probably won't miss wear my robe every day i kind of do it's over there on the chair but um socks with slippers guys sorry don't judge me definitely feeling homier i'm just overall super tight already let's see i did just eat but i already feel 
feeling my abs poking out, just getting leaner, keeping that muscle. Things are looking up, but it's only week one. I mean, come on, let's be realistic. It's more a mental game at this point. All right, I'm all set up here. Got the mics, got the computer. Just waiting for the hubby to get back here and uh, chat with you guys a little bit. And I'm just gonna go get something to drink. I'm a little parched. Gotta drink that water. All right, guys, look who I got here. I feel like a crazy person right now. Um, we are set up back here in our gym. This is our home gym. It's kind of a sweet little setup back here, but we're recording our podcast. This is where it all goes down. What do you? How do you feel about the podcast, babe? I'm enjoying it. How? Like wh how what would you describe? How would you describe it? Like what it's about? It's definitely new and interesting for me, and it's good to let the people hear what our thoughts on certain things and some that uh, don't be a bee and suck it up and handle your business in the gym and when it comes to your eating. He's hardcore. That's what happens when he's that personal trainer. You gotta be hard. No excuses. You gotta be kind of hard to be a personal trainer. You have to like really like. You do. That because you can't let people like cry out of things. That's why you hire them. That yep. For me, because if I work out by myself, I know I'm gonna like, mm, I'm just gonna like do 10 reps this time, but that's why it's good to have a trainer. Yep. And that's kind of the style that you get, guys. Exactly. He's repping his uh, Mon Mon Cats. We just shot for this brand, Mon Mon Cats. It's like a tattoo inspired Japanese tattoo art. Um, really cool stuff. I'll put up some pictures here so you guys can kind of see our shoot. That was kind of fun. We did that this week and, you know, we keep it interesting. Trying to do a couple of podcasts a week and um, we're about to record this episode that hopefully will be up tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then Tuesday. So look for that on Tuesday, the new episode. And we're gonna be talking about more about myths and cutting and fitness and just all the fun stuff. Hello, YouTube. So I never finished my other video, so I'm just continuing it, make this vlog cover several days. So it's now on day 11 for me of my cut. I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling super lean. I can definitely feel that I'm just tighter, my muscles feel good, I feel energetic. Yesterday I had my first cravings and instead of having any giving into them, I had my BCAA slushy. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is it right here. It's one scoop of BCAAs, 12 ounces of water, tons of ice, and it is like a slushy. And it tastes like a green Jolly Rancher. So these are my BCAAs. This is the flavor. I'll link them down below, but if you're having cravings and you're doing a cut and you're on strict macros, five calories, you'll freeze your ass off because it's cold, but it takes a long time to eat it and you're getting the added benefits of uh, your body trying to uh, regulate its temperature. So it's got like good metabolism benefits there. So I'm going to put this camera down and get my supplements ready for the day. I'll talk to you guys in a sec. So what I'm gonna do right now is get myself my BCAAs because I'm gonna head to the gym. And um, I sip on my BCAAs. As well. So I wanna just talk about what's happening right around this time. And, and this is kind of what I've dealt with in my challenge group that's also participating in this cut. Right around this time, you feel so much better. You're feeling leaner, tighter. You feel like it's been a lot longer than 11 days or so, right? So what will people do? They're gonna step on the scale. The scale is not an accurate reflection of your work here. I promise you the scale is just gonna be demotivating. If you can, put the scale away. Just do body scans to measure your progress because otherwise it's just going to demotivate you because the scale lies to you guys. Stop relying on the scale. I know I feel good. I have not weighed myself. I could care less about the weight. Like I've said before, I'm just doing my post scan. Um, but I feel leaner, tighter. This top, which is a crop top, I probably wouldn't have worn 11 days ago because I was feeling kind of fluffy after that, um, after that little bulk I did. And so I feel great in it. No spillage. 
my leg, even my Sphinx leggings are like a little loose in the waist. So why do we care about the scale? Why? As an online coach and someone who works with clients quite a bit, it is my biggest struggle dealing with people feeling demotivated by the scale. Unfortunately, it causes a lot of people to just completely abort mission. So if any of you are watching out there, listen to my podcast. Maybe that'll give you some insight. Candidly with coffee, iTunes, Spotify, Podomatic. Sorry guys, I'm getting my BCA is going. I'm going to take my L-carnitine, my Yohimbine. I'm still fasted. Um, and then I want to talk to you guys about, so yesterday I was the, um, I haven't been eating any processed foods at all. I've just been keeping it 100% whole. But yesterday I worked a protein bar into my macros because um, my day was kind of crazy with appointments. So it just kind of worked yesterday. Um, but as part of my cut protocol that I follow and what I have my clients do is if need be, if you need to add in one processed item per day, you can do so. Otherwise you want to keep it fully whole. So I did add a one bar. I love one bar. So good. Anyways, so that was really enjoyable. Um, today I'm going to go hit some shoulders and do my cardio. So I'm doing low intensity, steady state cardio after weight training. My theory is blow out the glycogen during weights, do a nice fat burning session of cardio and then um, break my fast at around 20 hours. That's kind of what has been working for me lately in my schedule and um, I love intermittent fasting and it just comes easy for me. I don't necessarily recommend somebody starting to intermittent fast when they start a cut. Um, if you've never done intermittent fasting, maybe you should just start slow. I've been doing intermittent fasting for like three years. So it's just a natural part of my schedule and I, I know it helps a lot. My ketone levels are through the roof, even though I've had like 60 grams of carbs a day. My ketone levels are over 2.0. And after I ate an entire cup of oatmeal and oatmeal and strawberries, my ketone levels were 1.5. So for people, the keto police out there who say you can't eat oats or fruit or whatever, ketosis is a metabolic state in your body. And um, there's many different ways to achieve ketosis and intermittent fasting paired with a low carb diet even not traditional ketogenic macros is gonna yield quite a bit of time in ketosis. So debunking myths left and right over here, guys. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna go head to the gym, but make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna give you guys play by play on how this cut is going, and you're going to be a believer once I hit eight weeks. I'm only 10 days in, I already feel amazing. I feel lean, I feel strong, I feel energetic, I feel detoxed. So can you only imagine when I get to day 60? Make sure you subscribe to my channel, stay tuned. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Plus, I'm hoping to have some of my, my um, star stellar bikini bootcamp recruits join me later on down as they get closer to the end as well to share their results because you guys are just gonna be blown away. Stay tuned.